This week, Dave is joined by good friend and world-renowned fly angler, April Vokey. And in a move that will shock guidance counselors all around the world, somehow Dave finds himself in the middle of a scientific study. Get a net on this dude before he gets in the tree. It's just like bass fishing. We're gonna learn a whole bunch with this bad mamma jamma. I'm Dave Mercer, pro angler and all round fishing big mouth. Today, I've got one day on one body of water and I am surrounded by cameras. Unfortunately for me, but fortunately for you, they're gonna show you everything that happens. And I mean everything. Son of a... Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Shimano, technology you can feel. Yamaha, conquer water. Live target lures. Jackal, eat, sleep, jackal. And Rigid Industries LED lighting. Torture tested, angler approved. Without further ado, here he is. I can't say this. Just read the script. The world's greatest angler, Dave Mercer. So this show gonna be totally different. This is not your regular Facts of Fishing episode. This episode is all about science. That's right, we're at La Reserve Boucher. Been here before, caught tons of giant fish here, but this time we're in search of the unicorn. That's right, the unicorn. The majestic giant brook trout and everything we do here this week is in the name of science. That's right, a very different show indeed. Not just gonna be your standard go out and fish and catch them. We are helping make this fishery better and I could not think of a better person to do it with than one of the baddest mamma jamma fly anglers on the planet. And that is April Volke. This is going to be the brook trout beat down and I am pumped. Wow. These trees are gonna make it some, it's gonna make casting tough, but you know what? I, I, I'm not gonna have any pride here. There's gonna be no fancy casting, just getting the fly in the water. There's never anything fancy on packs of fishing. Don't, don't screw up our track record. <laughs> it's insane how many fish there is here. They're everywhere. There we go. Nice. <laughs> Man, they're cool. I mean, you see these fish, and it really, it, it, it's incredible to, to see them, number one. I mean, you see them sitting right there, and I mean, it's, it's a whole different change. Fishing, generally, you don't see how the fish reacts. This style of fishing, you see it all. <laughs> and in this crystal clear water, I mean, sure, you have to wear waders and all this goofy stuff, but I'll tell you what, you're catching fish like this, I'll do it. Look Ooh, at that dude nice right one. there. What an awesome, awesome fish. And you look at the mouth on this fish. I mean, everybody's gonna come here and they're gonna say, well, you got so tiny baby little flies and that sort of thing. And, and I'm sure, hey, they eat that. But you look at the mouth on that dude right there and it's quite evident that these things can munch bigger baits. Get them on a hook. Well, here's the deal. All of these fish go right in here in this little holding pen. We've got a bigger pen up there. And we'll uh, bring this around so the fish spend minimal amount of time out of the water and then put them in the big pen and send them through for processing. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty thankful this is the most effective way to collect these fish. I mean, uh, this is an incredible opportunity and uh, very different. I mean, it's a different feeling, but uh, it's cool. Gotcha. There you go. All right. Hooked up, April. Nice. Don't spook the pool. Nice one. Good. Ooh, look at the spots on that one. 
off to the pen. Gonzo. All right, fun. Ooh, oh, that's the big one I want. That's the big one I want. He's got, got him. Oh! You. There's a whole bunch here. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Gosh, do you see that? There we go. Eat it. Eat it. Come here, dude. I'm obviously, you know, used to it. It's a little more effective when you're in a bass boat. But here we don't have a bass boat. We just get down here and get a little dirty with them. Look at that dude right there, dusted. That little bait. Awesome bow chain brookie. There you go, man. I'm gonna try something interesting. You wanna try a spinning rod? Yeah, you wanna let me use your spinning rod? I will, it's the name of science. You don't know it, Dave, but I'm learning from you. I'm watching what you're using. I'm watching how you've been presenting it. Okay, let's see. Dave's fishing something white and wormy. I got the right fly on now. Oh, 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 it's got smacked. Oh, go, oh, gotcha. <laughs> it's a little guy. Thank you. You ready? One, two, three. Cool. Still had fly, so it should be pinched barb. There you go. She's beautiful. Bring it to the pen. Bring it to the pen. So I watched that you let it hit the bottom. They're eating out of anger. They're eating out of protection. Like, see how he's getting angry, making those darting movements? Yeah. He'll eat in a second. Watch. Oh, you got interest. You got interest. Okay, okay, okay. We're, we're figuring I got it out. Fish. Oh! <laughs> you did too. You bugger. I got lucky, April. I don't know if that's luck, Dave. Honestly, I just learned a ton watching that. Where's the net at? That dude came up and smoked that little bait. All it is is a jackal crosstail shad, probably one of the most popular bass drop shot baits. But I'll tell you what, get up here to Beauchamp with these monster, monster brook trout lift. That works pretty good here too. Nice one, Dave. <laughs> that is a good one. A really nice one. Oh, look at this dude. Easy. Coming up. Get a net on this dude before he gets in the tree. It's just like bass fishing. Look at that dude right there. If that isn't sexy, I don't know what is sexy, but this whole deal, I mean, this is a unique opportunity. You don't often get a chance to, you know, be exposed to these fish at this time of year, but the reason that this fishing is as good as it is really has got a lot to do with the group of anglers that's here this week investing countless years in these bad boys right here. And that dude is a bad mamma jamma right there. So Mark, where I'm from, fishing on reds is deemed unethical and I have actually never done this before. So I know that right now, today, we're here in the name of science collecting fish, which is really exciting and cool. Uh, but I want to know a little bit more about the, the program. Sure. Uh, so today we're targeting 12,000 brook trout eggs for uh, incubating in the lake environment to help reseed the lake. Um, it starts off with having a group of anglers come in uh, with um, usually flies that they're using and they're targeting the right females that are on the reds. Normally you wouldn't do this unless you had a specific purpose and that being to collect eggs from females that are ripe. You're not going to get that by fishing out in the lake. So you've got to target them on their reds. Uh, you're going to be actually trying to collect at least two males for each female. Once we collect the fish, uh, we'll go through and anesthetize them. Uh, once the fish is sedated, we'll take the uh, length and weight, uh, the sex, whether it's a right male or a right female. Uh, we'll also remove the adipose fin off the uh, back end of the fish for a permanent marker, and that allows us to, first of all, use the material for genetic purposes, and also permanently mark the fish knowing that it's got a microchip inserted into its uh, cheek. That microchip is really important. It's like a serial number on your car. You can track that fish from year to year every time you capture it. And it gives us precise information on the uh, growth of the fish from year to year in terms of length and weight. 
brook trout are very dependent on groundwater upwelling for spawning. Uh, behind us, there's a large uh, gravel pit. Before it was a gravel pit, it was a much larger gravel deposit with much more groundwater, and it was supplying that groundwater for the reproduction of the brook trout. Because of the removal of the uh, gravel, uh, the uh, brook trout population was declining uh, because they weren't having as much successful reproduction. So we're kind of replacing that function with uh, collecting uh, the eggs, fertilizing, uh, incubating in a lake environment for six months. We come back in May, uh, open up the incubation units, uh, count out the fry, and release the fry back into the lake here. So it's a very low intrusive method of uh, repopulating the lake, knowing that there's been some impacts uh, associated with gravel extraction in the past. You know, one of the whole deals with this style of fishing is... Got him, got him, got him! Yeah! April hooked up right now, and you hear people talk all the time about accuracy, and this is the style of fishing where accuracy definitely matters. All right, gonna net this for me, thank you. Nice work, high five, thank you. They're a lot smaller than steelhead, aren't they? You can see they've got those beautiful spots. We're gonna go ahead and get this guy back to scientific data, study. Study time, let's get him back if that's cool. There we go, ate it, smoked it. Oh. This is basically one of the disadvantages of fishing from shore. You can't set the hook, but I'm gonna tell you, you know, when it comes, I was saying it a minute ago before, I was rudely interrupted by April's fish, but one of the deals is you hear a lot of people talking about accuracy, whether you, you know, go to a fishing seminar or that sort of thing. It is the biggest key with this style of fishing. I mean, not only do you have to manipulate your bait around, you know, these areas, these beds, these fish are sitting on, but you've got all these trees and that sort of thing. So accuracy is key. And you watch how these fish react. It is a totally, different style of fishing. It is not about so much the hunger and that sort of thing. I mean, they're, they're protecting their zone, and every once in a while, they munch, just like that. This is a good boy, on cue. Get this dude in the net and bring him for processing. Come here, come here, sexy. Oh, look at that sexy critter right there. And you see that fish does not have a fin back here. That means that this is one of the fish they have processed in the past. It's got a chip in it, so we're gonna learn a whole bunch with this bad man pajama. I cannot keep their interest, you know? I've tried everything, small, large, flashy, natural. Honestly, short of putting on a worm like, that actually wiggles, I really don't know what else to do. Changing color can make a big difference, especially in a betting fish like this. I mean, these are tricks that you, know, you learn tournament fishing for bass, but a betting fish like that gets accustomed to a certain thing, knows it's not threatening, and as simple as just changing the color of your crosstail shad can make all the difference. You see how smart I am right there? I actually pulled out the exact same color. What I meant to do was actually change my color. And if you do that, it's definitely more effective than just re-rigging the same color. There we go. They smoked it. Nice. Hooked up. Easy now, sunshine. Look at that dude right there. Another one dusted that little crosstail shad. What a cool, cool fish. And you can see right there, he's got his fin. So this is a new inductee to the program. Now I'm sure a lot of people are watching this and thinking, you know, if they're collecting these fish for science, why are they using the method that they are? But really, a rod and reel is the most effective way to collect these fish. You think about it, you come through here, whether you're electroshocking or netting, I mean, that is going to affect this fishery for a long time. The majority of all the fish on this body of water, I mean, they spawn right here on this small stretch that we're fishing. So the most efficient and effective way and the least intrusive way to collect them is obviously to fish them with a rod and reel. No, I'm in a tree. I'm in a tree when I'm finding a fish. Get over here. 
Look at that dude right there. Absolutely dust that bait and he's gone. That is the kind you want. Unfortunately, that dude is not gonna be part of the program, but uh, part of my program. They're getting a little more aggressive, aren't they, right now? Oh, there we go, I got him. Easy sunshine. Just throw the net down there, no mind. Put that dude right in the net and make him part, make her part of the program right there. But that is a sexy, sexy fish. And as I said, I don't spend a lot of time, you know, talking about the vermiculations and the colors of a fish. But when you see these sexy beasts, easy stay in there. Oh, you can't help but say how sexy they are. And they're gonna be sexier for a long time to come. Ooh, I want more. Eat it. He's got it. He ate it. He ate it. I like it when they listen like that. Look at that fish. How sexy is that? Absolutely incredible. What a species. Get him in the net. Purr. Send it for processing. Oh, I gotta be honest. I mean, I've done a lot fishing different places and caught a bunch of different fish, but this is the very first time that I've ever had fish caddies. I mean, these guys, they're just there with the net. We'd like to thank Boucher not only for being such a great place to fish, but for investing in the future of our sport through studies such as this. Brought to you by Rigid Industries LED Lighting, makers of the UV Black Light Kit, torture tested, angler approved. After a long day of slamming supersized brookies for science, the crew went back to the cabin and sorted eggs until the wee hours of the morning. As it turns out, they fell just short of their goal of 12,000 eggs. So Mark tasked Dave and April with going out and collecting a few more fish the following morning. Oh, it's beautiful. It's like a recola. I've got a good spot here. There's a, there's a nice red here, there's some big fish. I'm gonna go for the spot right here. Oh, I just had a giant chase me from the depths. Oh, he's on it, he's on it. Dave. It's got, got, got him, got him. Got him. <laughs> how awesome was that to oh, watch it happen? Awesome. I mean, I don't care who you are, where are you fishing? That is an incredible, incredible fish. Fish. A nice one there too. Good one. <laughs> oh, Emma. This is something I'm not used to in a bass boat. Another awesome, awesome Beauchain Brookie. I love it. I think I need something a little more aggressive than what I've got on. I think if I put on something a little more natural, like what you had on, I'm gonna go a little smaller. They're literally avoiding my fly by all costs. I mean, is there any fly that you haven't thrown yet? No. <laughs> I know I've had all sorts of followers, but no one committing. Okay, pass me his rod real quick. Is it a bad look for my career if I pick up that spinning rod right now? Dave's gone for a minute, and uh, I am certainly not too proud. I'm gonna pick this thing up. I fly fish because it's challenging, but I, I don't fly fish because it's supposed to be impossible. So I'm gonna see if I can try to get one on his rig. The sad truth of the matter is that Dave has put on a clinic out here so far this morning and uh, I'm tired of being a student so I'm gonna go find a red with this thing. How come you got such a cool real hard and real now? It's amazing how these fish, we've watched them evolve, like literally in the last 24 hours, you know, like they went from having no pressure on them and being very active and now they've had an immense amount of pressure on them and it's a, a grind to get one of them to react. Make it happen, April. I'm trying to make it rain. I'm making it rain soft plastics. What What more do you want from me, fish? Oh, 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 she's close. Oh, she got, got it, you got, got her, her, you did her. it. You did it. I did it, and we got the female. Okay, we really, really need her because we need her eggs really, really, really bad. Oh, that is awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. Look how beautiful she is. I'm just gonna look at those. Wow, look at those spots. Vermiculations. Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. Okay, let's put her back in the net. I always want to keep her gills in the water and keep her head underwater. Nice work, you did it. All right, let's go put her in the, the net so that we can take her eggs and make some babies.
They do not like my fly here. Do not like it in a good way or? In a good way. Gotcha. There you go. You did it. Where's the net? I'm going to get the net. I'm getting the net. Big one. Cool. Oh, that's a great fish. This is the big one I was going after, so this is really awesome. Good job, April. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a Good. male and a female for them to use. The net on this dude. Fun. High five. It's awesome. Yes. He it did works. it. See, I told you. It works. All right. So that is a, that's one of the coolest fish we've caught. So this is the one that I was going after and I've been watching Dave all day and just really learning um, by how he, how he fishes them when they're in the reds because this is so new to me. And sure enough, I did what he said. I left that, that fly in the red. I just kept it in that buck's face. I could see his fins starting to flare. He was starting to get a little more aggressive, a little more aggressive, and then finally he just, he opened his mouth and took the opportunity and set the hook. So this is great. Hopefully this beautiful big buck can, uh, can help fertilize those, those eggs from that female. That thing is really incredible. Wow. What a beautiful big buck. Dave and April fished for 12 hours and 36 minutes, made 1,441 casts, and ultimately helped meet the goal of collecting and fertilizing 12,000 Beauchene brook trout eggs. And that's the score. Now it's time for the facts. Every single one of Dave's fish came on a jackal crosstail shad, rigged on an 8 ounce darter jig head, fished on a 6 foot 8 medium light action Shimano Zodius rod, paired with a Shimano Stratic CI4 Plus reel, spooled up with 15 pound Timber Brown Power Pro Super Slick line, and an 8 pound fluorocarbon leader. April, on the other hand, fished various flies on a 10 foot G Loomis GLX native run fly rod, paired with a G Loomis Adventure 5 fly reel that was spooled up with yellow fly line and a fluorocarbon leader. Now you've got the facts.